We have the land geek, Mark Podolsky on the call again. And Mark, you haven't been on the show for a while, so this is going to be a treat. We're going to revisit a few things, um, but I'm going to direct everybody to your page because you can whole tail land and Mark and his team can help you with some of this. We've talked about whole tailing single family homes on the podcast in the past. So this is going to be an interesting conversation. Thelandgeek.com slash quick deals. Thanks for being on the show, Mark. JD, so great to be back. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. So let's let's talk about this concept here, wholetailing land. What what do you got going on here on this? All right. So you remember the model, right? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get a list from the county of people that are lowest hanging fruit or people that live out of state, no back taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna look at the lowest comparable sales. Let's say the lowest comparable sale on that property in Texas that we we probably talked about in episode one thirteen was $10,000. We're going to divide by four and we're going to send an actual offer out for $2,500. Well, this person has no emotional attachment to the raw land and they're distressed financially in some weird way because they're not paying their property taxes. As a result, the county treasurer keeps sending them notices saying, hey, you don't pay your property taxes. You're going to lose it to a tax deed or tax lien investor. And three to 5% of people accept our quote unquote top dollar offer of 25 cents on the dollar. And then once they accept that offer, we go through our due diligence or in-depth research. I got to confirm you still own the property. Back taxes are only $200. There's been no breaks in the chain of title. There's no liens or encumbrances. I want to know about legal access or ingress or egress. What's compelling about the property? And we outsource all that to our team in the Philippines for about 11 bucks. They're connected to an American title company. If I'm investing 5,000 or more, I'll be connected to American. I just close traditionally through a title company. But what if, JD, Everything I just told you, we can eliminate. We don't have to get a list. We don't have to do county research. We don't have to price the list. We don't have to scrub a list. We don't have to invest money in mailing. We don't have to do due diligence. All that can be eliminated. That's where the whole piece comes in. We're all Somebody, we'll call them the wholesaler, has already done all that work for us. Now, as long as they're a reputable wholesaler, which means that they've, you know, in our community, you can, you know, make sure that they've done lots of wholesale deals and that they leave enough meat on the bone for you, the retailer, you just get their due diligence report. You get their plot maps, you get their aerial maps, you get their satellite maps. You get everything that a buyer's going to know. Your whole marketing package is delivered there for you. For As a result, you're going to pay a little bit higher premium than doing all that work yourself. But you don't care because the wholesaler should have left about 100% Worst case scenario on a cash flip, meet on the bone for you. But you have to do your numbers. And mm-hmm. then all you're going to do is the second half of the model, which is the marketing piece. So when we're marketing, JD, do you remember we have a built in Best Buyer? Do you know who it is? Yeah, the neighbors. The neighbors, you got it. Right. We're going to send out those neighbors. Hey, see, I remembered. I listened to you last time. You remembered. So we're going to send out those neighbors letters saying, hey, it's your opportunity. Know your neighbor protect your privacy, protect your views. Now, if the neighbors pass, we're going to go to our buyer's list. But if we don't have a buyer's list, we're just a newbie, then we're going to go to a little website called Craigslist, 10th most trafficked website in the United States. Then we'll go to Meta or Facebook, right? Buy, sell yeah. groups, the marketplace, and then the lands. Landmoto.com, landfarm.com, landsofamerica.com, landflip.com, landhub.com, all these platforms where people buy and sell raw land every day. But the magic happens in our pricing. So if we bought it, let's say for $1,000, and we want to flip it for $2,000, great, we can do that. But we can always make more money. We can't get more time. So the game I like to play is I want to create a passive income stream. So if I bought it for $1,000, I'd rather sell it for $10,000 on easy owner financing terms. So I'll say, hey, to own this 10-acre parcel, that used to be owned by the famous J.D. Haas, all you have to do is put $1,000 down and then we get a car payment, say $2.99 a month, 9% interest over the next 72 months. So it's a one-time sale. We get our passive income every single month, just like somebody that is landlording a home. But J.D., we've eliminated all the headaches, no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents. And then the game is, can we create enough of these land notes? Can those months, can that, that 
mailbox money of two ninety nine a month add up to you know it starts off like say grocery money, then it goes into vacation money, next thing you know, and car payment money, then you're at mortgage money, and next thing you know, am I going to quit my job and work because I want to, not because I have to? And that's the game that we play. Yeah, and man, wow, what a lesson here in the first few minutes. Uh, and just a, a quick note: we're talking about episode 117. So take a look at that episode because it kind of lays down the groundwork for what we're talking about here. But this is really a powerful message that you have here, Mark, is the the concept. You know, I actually revisit your episode with me a few times because you don't have any idea. I'm sure you have an idea of how appealing what you're talking about is when you're talking about raw land because of the headaches and and trouble that you can have when you're self being a self landlord with some of these actual rental properties. Yeah, I mean I, you know, I've never di- I've never been a landlord. I would never want that headache. But I can only imagine. We and you're right, we have a lot of clients that come in from that space and all those headaches disappear and they are so grateful to just be able to shuffle paper and make money. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I that all that floored me that first time that we were talking about in and your traditional method and finding these properties and you're essentially trying to maintain this note um but what you've what you've really been able to do in most cases is you find the property you might have to have a little financial outlay at first but your buyer will typically make that as your down the down payment or you try to make that as your down payment and then still carry a note after the fact that just blew my mind yeah absolutely so get your capital out as fast as possible and even if you have to go 10 months out so what you've got this asset that lasts forever and if they default big deal now instead of your cost basis being $1000 if they made three months of payments of two nine nine a month, well, what's your cost basis now? A hundred mm-hmm. bucks. So now that you resell it, you get another down payment of a thousand dollars, and your ROI goes through the roof. You know, you 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 keep saying two ninety nine a month. Is that your magic number? Is that the one you're trying to trying to hit each time? Not necessarily. I want to I want a number that is a car payment number. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes I'll look at what's the the best selling. You know, car in the United States is it? You know, is it? It's Camry, and I go on and say, okay, what's the average Camry payment? And that kind of gives me an idea. So I want to be in that ballpark there because that's going to be our biggest buyer pool. Mm-hmm. And well, you know, it just happens to be that three hundred dollar mark is typically what an investor is going to see as a, a return for a single family house in most markets as well. I mean, it just happens to right. be, and now you don't have the refrigerator going out or a few other things that happen that uh, makes that cash flow disappear in a heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, I love the idea of nothing physical and nothing to maintain, nothing to protect. And just the fact that it's such a boring niche, there's no competition. You're not going to go on HGTV, the DIY network and see flip this land, the pic- before pictures raw land, the after pictures raw land. So we have this sort of boring, geeky niche that sure. I mean, if you go to a ARIA, a RIA meeting, right, a real estate investment association meeting, 100 people in the room, 99 of them are going to be wholesalers, landlords, and flippers. You and I would be the only land guys, which I like because we have this massive market and you know very few players. Right. So you know you talked uh, originally. You know you you mail out these the the 25 cents on the dollar offers, and then whoever comes back to you are the ones that you deal with. Could you could you spend a little time talking a little bit about what you what you have to do to um, educate that seller when when they come to you and and the type of relationship and and a few other things that you might have to communicate with them so that they understand and they're fully on board with what you're what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, oftentimes this asset is no longer an asset; it's a liability. So in the same way, if I made you an offer 25 cents on the dollar for everything that you're not using in your garage, how quickly would you accept that offer? Probably pretty quickly. You don't know my garage. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) My garage is the same way. So typically, all I have to tell the seller is the closing process. And I'm going to say, look, I'm going to go through due diligence. If everything checks out, I'm going to email you a deed 
And then all you're going to do is print out that deed, sign it, notarize it. Your local UPS store should have a notary and then send it back to me. Once I record it, and I use Simplify to record. So I can just scan it with my phone, record it. I get confirmations recorded. I'll send you a check and that's it. And, and that's the closing process. And I say it just like that. Mm-hmm. Now, 99% of the time they say, great. 1% of the time they say, wait a second, I'm going to deed over my property to you. You're, I'm going to just trust that you're going to send me a check. And then I say, well, how about if we do this together? If I make the simplest, most transparent, you know, easiest real estate transaction you've ever had in your entire life. So as soon as I get the deed, I'm going to call you. As soon as I sign it, or, or as soon as I receive it, I'm going to call you. I'm going to then show you a screenshot of me recording it. I'm then going to show you a little home video of me writing out the check and then going to the shipwright store where I belong to, mailing it to you, priority mail. You're going to receive it. Once you cash that check, the money is in your bank. Will you do me a favor? Will you make me a video testimonial for my website saying that Mark was so easy to work with? This was such a pleasant transaction. Here's a guy that when he says he's going to do something, does it. And then for the next person, then they'll have more faith that this process is going to work. And also between you and me, JD, you know, for $1,000, would you put yourself out of business and have somebody you know, say horrible things to you on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and all the social medias? Mm-hmm. Because then I'm out of business. So I don't right. want to be out of business. I want to treat you right. Fair enough. Do we have a deal? Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. So you, you let's back up there for a second. You you do you have to you don't have to go through like a title company like like with Not a single if family. Five thousand. If it's five thousand or less, I won't go through a title company. If it's five thousand or more, I will. Okay. But in our example, it was only you know a thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars. So what was that service that you use when it's five thousand or less? How do you, how do you, well, actually the service is simplify.com that now that is just to record deeds. Oh, so okay. my whole philosophy is I can always make more money. I can't get more time. So simplify, I won't even, I only work simplify counties because they make it so easy. Oh, okay. That's yeah. interesting. So 5,000 or less, you just, you just do it. I'll so close. So when you're, when you're acquiring these plots of land, is there like a size restrictions? Like you won't deal with anything under a certain amount of acres or like what, what's that situation? No, I mean, I'm opportunistic. So, I mean, you know, whether it's raw land or a collectible or a car, you buy any asset 25 cents of the dollar, there's someone else on the other end of that deal at 50 cents of the dollar. So if whether it's a postage stamp size or 640 acres, I really don't care. Sure. Okay. Is there any land you just won't touch? The only land I won't touch is land that is in a super fund site. So that means that it's been it's an, has an environmental issue. Okay. Otherwise, if if I can buy any land 25 cents a dollar, I'm going to buy it. As sure. you know, I mean obviously it, it's got to have some use to it. Now, would I buy swampland in Florida? Absolutely. You can grow shiitake mushrooms on it. So as long as I disclose to the next buyer, great place to buy to grow your shiitake mushrooms. Absolutely. Would I buy in a floodplain? Well, if somebody wants to take their ATV out there and play in the water, absolutely. Now, would I tell somebody in a floodplain, here's a place to build your dream home? Absolutely not. So right. as long as I'm doing my marketing correctly and marketing to the right person, I, my threshold is really, really low. I mean, sure. I bought land that you know, because I'm not the market. Like you and I would never buy this land. I mean, this stuff looked like Chernobyl, but at the right price, it all sold. No refunds. Hmm. And I also do a 90 day additional due diligence guarantee as well. So if they don't love it, I'm just going to refund them. Sure. Sure. Okay. So, you know, you, you talk about the due diligence. Can you spend a little time talking about the due diligence you do? Like, let's start with you creating your list. You're you're targeting this land for the twenty five cents in the dollar. Do you have somebody go through that list of land and and validate the value of in that area what the val- value would be so you can come up with your number? Well, not necessarily because this is all public information. I just want to look at the last comparable sale, oh, the okay. lowest comparable sale for the last twelve to eighteen months. So that validates the market for me, okay. and then I'll divide by four. And then you just send out the letter. And I send out the letter. 
Exactly. So, so just to remind everybody, head over to thelandgeek.com slash quick deals. And uh, there's a lot of information on Mark's website. So it's a great, great place to just kind of fish around and see what else you can find. So th- this whole tailing thing is relatively uh, new. Like uh, last time we talked, you we were talking about the your, your standard process. Now you're as, essentially starting to, you're building a whole, wholesaler network, right? Like how, right. how has that been going? It's been going great. And I think the best way to learn anything is by doing it. And so if we can simplify that process and help people just make quick money, then they're more likely to go deeper into the model and learn more. So that's why we offer it as a free course, make some money. And if you want to invest more, well, you have another avenue to invest more in yourself and education, or you can learn on your own. But but at least you have confidence that this is a model that actually works without taking too big of a risk. Can you give us an example of like one of your students who've who've recently pulled one of these off and what what type of return and what what the deal looked like? Yeah, I mean I've got lots of examples. I get these these boxes and and uh, emails every day. I'll, I'll just, you know, I'd have to go on like, you know, right now to like play it, but just to save time, uh, I, I could, you know, send you some, but essentially like the one I'm, I'm thinking of, they put $200, they did what we call a land arb deal. So they put a hundred dollars down. So land, arb, land arbitrage. So they, they, they bought it for a hundred dollars from, mm-hmm. from us, right. Knowing that the market, they could get $500 down and $200 a month. So they're paying us hundred dollars down hundred dollars a month. And then they just flipped it for 500 down, 200 a month. And their yield on that is, is crazy. Yeah. That, that I, I just, it, it, every time we talk numbers associated with this, I, I question why I haven't attempted this because we talked about the area of the world that I am and uh, it's nothing but land around me. Yeah. I, I don't know, JD, but you know, I mean, you, we're creatures you know, of habit. That's you're the problem. creatures of habit. Exactly. Exactly. And I think there is something about focus and there is something to be said about not chasing every shiny object. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that, that is true. What you focus on always grows, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, okay. Well, uh, with that being said, like, let's talk, let's talk about uh, going through some of that, some of that process. You talked about the, your virtual assistants, what type of work do they do for you then? So my team is, let's just take the first piece of the process, right? Talking to the seller. So mm-hmm. you get that, you send that offer to the seller. Well, I don't want to spend all day on the phone talking to sellers. So we call that the intake manager. The intake manager is simply US-based and they're compensated two ways. The first way is a low hourly rate because mm-hmm. they really make their money. They get compensated for renegotiating with the seller. So when they're talking to the sellers, they're asking the seller questions. And then they're leading the due diligence team. They come back to the seller and say, hey, I know that we offered you $5,000 for that five-acre parcel. But after doing due diligence, now it's $4,000. So for every $1,000 they save, they get an extra $100. And they love it. So they love renegotiating. Now, sometimes it's not appropriate to renegotiate. No problem. They will get a little bonus of, say you know, a hundred dollars for acquiring that property and leading it down the road. So oh, that's sure. the first part is, is the intake manager. And they might have just a low hourly, maybe 10 bucks an hour. Mm-hmm. So they're getting really paid for doing their job and, and buying the land. Mm-hmm. Now, after the intake manager, we have our due diligence team. I don't want to do, do, the, do the due diligence. <laughs> so again, we're going to have a team in the Philippines that's connected to an American title company. And there's already people out there that are doing this. There's land VA in the number four you.com. They'll do your due diligence for you. There's parcel, I think it's is it parcelreview.com. They'll do your due diligence for you. There's landmasters.us. They'll do your due diligence for you. So we've created like a little mini economy of people that actually learn the land business and will do it for you. Mm-hmm. So that's another way to do it. Now you can start with them look at their systems and processes, and then go to like an upwork.com or fiverr.com and ultimately hire your own person 
but you never want to be person dependent. It's all about those processes and systems. So sure. that the process and systems are really what's valuable, not the person. So yeah. that's so that's the second sort of major role is your due diligence person. And then you want to have your marketing manager, marketing team, who's going to upload the ads to Craigslist and Facebook and landmoto.com. It's a lot of copy and paste, mm -hmm. but someone needs to do it. And then you create a process and system for each you know, platform because Facebook certainly is going to be different than Craigslist and their algorithms going to be different than, than something else. But we're going to use the four fundamentals of marketing just because, you know, obviously tactics are always changing, but what are the fundamentals? You want a strong headline, right? Mm -hmm. You want what I call an anchor. So an anchor is one price and then there's, it's crossed out with a lower price. They can't unsee it. So there's instantly use the, in the buyer's mind, this is a great value. Now it is, but psychologically that anchor gives them some reference point of the value of the land because we're in an inefficient market. You mm -hmm. can't go on Zillow and see the comparable sales on that raw land. So they have to have something. So you have a strong headline, an anchor, then you need to have scarcity or urgency. This is one of one piece of raw land. There'll never be another one just like it ever on the planet. Mm -hmm. So, and at this price, it's not going to last long. So you inject that scarcity and urgency, and then you have a clear call to action. Here's how you can control this piece of property risk-free. Call this number, hit this email, right? Sure. And, right. and do that. So, so as long as they inject those four pieces in every marketing piece, we have a uh, process and system for that. Then it's pretty easy to make the, the marketing copy from there. Mm -hmm. So that's another VA. And then we have our acquisition manager that's managing the team overall and making sure that they're closing these sales with the new buyers that want to buy our property. And then managing the note process using geekpay.io, which are set, is our set and forget it software. And then managing lgpass.com on the front end, which is our, our sort of our CRM managing the business. So it's 90% automated now with software, inexpensive virtual assistants. Sure. So that, that geekpay.com that you just referred to. Oh, no, geekpay.io. Yeah. Geekpay.io. That's servicing the note, essentially. You know, that's where Correct. they're making it's, their payments. Do you exactly. have to, are you, do you escrow like the taxes and stuff there as well then? Absolutely. So we collect the taxes as well and pay the taxes because the property still stays in our name. We're using a land contract so, as so, opposed to a deed of trust. So there's no cost of foreclosure. Sure. And is there any, anything else outside of that, that, that you would also escrow single family home? Some of those services would escrow insurance as well. Well, there's no insurance right. necessarily. Yeah. Sure. So, so typically it's just the taxes. We charge a, a you know, say a $9 note collection fee. So we're going to oh. take that out as well. If we're, it's, if it's in a, we call it property owners association, we might prorate that as well monthly. I try to stay away from them. Sure. So have you ever had a situation where you've managed to get a piece of land under contract and, and it ended up being more valuable than you initially thought? Yeah. Um, we, you know, we find properties that are sometimes in the path of growth. And then I don't sell those properties. I put them into my trust with explicit instructions for my children, do not sell this property until you get a seven figure offer from a developer. Oh, sure. Do you go through the, like the process of getting it rezoned and, and making it more attractive for a developer? I, I typically don't, I just hold it. And if someone would call, then, you know, if I, I really see that this is just going to really blow up, then sure, I could do that. That's, that's sure. a pretty simple process. Sure. No, I was just curious on that, that process because I, I'm sure that's interesting. You you just kind of put it in the bank essentially into your trust and and hold on to it like that. Yeah, exactly. And there's it's called a land banking model. It's a, a traditional way of you buy land in the path of growth, and it's typically like a hockey stick model. So if you can picture a hockey stick, it's flat. Actually, it's negative cash flow because you're paying the taxes every year. Right. And all of a sudden, development comes and it hockey sticks up. Right. And you, you know, you you make you know all, all those all that all those taxes and a hundred x from there. So so if people liked here, you know, the, this concept and what you're talking about here, would you suggest that they start in their own backyard? I wouldn't, because let's face it, JD, nobody wakes up and thinks of themselves, boy, I'd like some raw land today in North Dakota. 
unless you live <laughs> in North Dakota. So yeah. I want to focus on the sunshine states, Nevada, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, California, Oregon, Washington, Florida. These are the sunshine states, a little bit in the Northwest. And these are fast growing states. And these are states that have a ton of inexpensive raw land. Not to say you can't do deals in North Dakota. You can. It's just, I wouldn't start there. I want to start with my biggest buyer pool as possible. Sure. Well, you, would you would you specify state that they should probably do some target, you know, to spread across the United States or the, even the Sunshine States, unless you have some track record and and understand what you're talking about here, that's right, going to be right. expensive so and if, daunting. Yeah. So let's say you're a total newbie, right? Let's say I'm just starting out fishing and I go in the lake with you, and you're a great fisherman, right? And I see, oh, there's JD, and there's twelve other boats on this one bank. And they're catching all these fish. Then I see there's two other boats on the opposite end, and they're not catching anything. Should I go where there's less competition for the fish, or should I go where the people are catching the fish? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go where they're catching the fish. So I want to go where I know definitively other land investors have a strong market, and I'm going to send out my offers there. Sure. Well, this is kind of an interesting thing concept too, because you just talked about competition essentially. You know, everybody is trying to get in the flipping business, if you will. You know, they they see sure. HGTV and the competition is very heavy. In fact, you know, it's hard to find flippable houses, actually, in most markets these days. What would you classify the competition looks like when it comes to the, the raw land? Well, there's billions of acres of raw land available. There's no hedge funds. There's no private equity groups. There's no big money. And it's a very boring niche. So... In my mind, there is no competition. So I've been doing this full time since 2001. My company has only grown as more, and I keep teaching this stuff. So you'd think there would be competition, but no, all ships rise with the tide. There's plenty for everybody. Sure. Sure. Just to remind everybody thelandgeek.com slash quick deals to take advantage of what uh, Mark is talking about here today and, and some of his training opportunities. Mark, this is it's always a great conversation to have with you. I always find this uh, just fascinating, the concept of raw land. And and um, I had warned you at the beginning of the, before we hit record, that I was going to end the show with, is, is there a question you wished I would have asked you here today? You know, I, I wish you asked more about what it takes, the mindset of a great land investor. Well, what does it take? It takes one word, grit. 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 Are you able to continue and are, do you have enough determination to continue in a new endeavor and be comfortable being uncomfortable long enough until you have confidence? Because on a long enough timeline, we're all going to get paid as long as we're playing in the right niche. Mm -hmm. So Elon Musk works probably just as hard as our corner grocer, but he gets paid way more money. He's just playing in the right area. So I would say that on a long enough timeline, as long as you have enough grit and you're in the right niche, real estate, right? Or you know, some other type of strong business with a big market, stay in there long enough to get competence. That, that's what I would say. Too often you see people that they're competent in one area, then they feel uncomfortable and then they don't get success right away. And they're like, oh, I'm not good at this. I'm going to quit. And if they just stayed with it long enough, they would have tremendous success. So I love that Zig Ziglar quote. If you'll do it for the next three to five years, what other people won't do, you'll be able to do it for the next of your next the rest of your life, what other people can't do. But notice he said three to five years, mm -hmm. not three to five months. Yeah. When you were saying that, it reminds me of a cartoon I, I see on Facebook and the socials quite often. You you see that the person he's mining. And he and he's just inches away from hitting that gold, but he gives up. Exactly. You know, that's that's really that's that's a great advice. It's that persistent, consistent behavior that we're talking about on a regular basis. So I really appreciate your time. I hope you don't take uh, as long of a stretch next time. Uh, please come back soon. I, I we we I I felt like I jumped around a little bit on you here tonight, but uh, there's always some great information. No, I'm happy to come back, Judy. Thank you.